Hey everybody, it's AJ here, and in today's video, we're gonna have a look at Windows 365 from Microsoft. In this video, we're gonna have a look at what is Windows 365, and then we're gonna provision our first virtual PC. If you're not familiar with Windows 365, it's a new cloud-based service by Microsoft that easily lets you create Windows virtual PCs or cloud computers for your end users. It's designed to essentially simplify the provisioning, the manageability and the scalability of these cloud PCs because it gives you essentially a few turnkey solutions where you select processor, RAM, hard drive, a few quick options and then you get a cloud PC up and running in a few minutes. Let's have a quick look now at the configuration section of your Windows 365 PC so you can see how easy it actually is. Right now we're on the Microsoft website and we're going to configure our first cloud-based PC. And you can see here that you have a few options, whether it's business or enterprise. Today we're going to go for business and you have basically three sections to choose from. The processor, so how many virtual cores you want it to have, one, two, four, or eight. How much RAM you want that computer to have, how much storage that computer has, and of course, if you're gonna use the Windows Hybrid Benefit, which is essentially saying if you're gonna use it on a Windows 10 PC that has Windows 10 Pro, you get a discount. One thing I wanna call out here is that if you look at the one core CPU, it only has access for the Microsoft Office apps on the web. But if you go to the two cores or above, so we're looking over here where it says support the web version, but if you go to two cores or above, this says it supports the desktop version of everything. So of course there's different use cases and different users need, you know, maybe one, two, four, eight cores. But that's one thing I wanna call out that if you're going for the cheapest option, you only get Office 365 on the web and not on the virtual desktop. And as you can see here, as we go up, whether you put in two, four, or we go max it out with eight cores, you get up to 32 gigs of RAM and you get up to 512 gigs of storage. And as you can see on the right hand side, it is a per user per month subscription. And this is designed for business users. For today's example, we are gonna get the two core version. We're gonna stick with four gigs of RAM and we're just gonna make it as cheap as possible for me. We're only gonna have 64 gigs of storage and that comes to $48.10 AUD per user per month or for myself. Right now we're provisioning it through the website for the first time. So we'd hit buy now and then put our details in. But once you've actually set it up for the first time, you would access it through windows365.microsoft.com or if you're an enterprise, you'd access it through your endpoint manager. So before we get into actually provisioning the PC, I wanna answer the question of, you know, what are the benefits of Windows 365 and who's it targeted at? Well, Microsoft say that Windows 365 is targeted for business users that need a quick standard virtual desktop experience for any hardware. What immediately pops to my mind is, say, a company that had people working in the office, the pandemic hits, and now they all have to work from home, but they don't have the right hardware to support that, or they don't have the infrastructure to keep that information safe. If that IT department can quickly spool up some Windows 365 virtual PCs for their users, they can log in from any device. That's right, it doesn't have to be a Windows PC, but they can log in from any device from home and they can access all of their work environment because essentially it's all based in the cloud. So what I'm giving you there is a bit of an oversimplification, but that's essentially how I see it working and that you can just quickly scale these desktops to the people because it's a few turnkey options and then you're basically provisioning these people to access their work and their desktop from any computer or any device. And when I say any device, it doesn't have to be just an existing Windows PC. It could be a MacBook, it could be an iPad, or it could even be something like a Surface Duo. So like I said, in this video, we're just gonna turn it on for the first time, but I am actually gonna test it out and see how Windows 365 runs on the Surface Duo. If you are interested in seeing that video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it when we do upload it. One of the most exciting features of Windows 365 that I see is the instant on desktop environment, which basically means I could be here working from home on my Surface Book in my Windows 365 virtual desktop, turn off my Surface Book, then I could be on the road. I pull out my iPad or a different device, I log into that Windows virtual desktop, and instant on means everything that was open is gonna be there on my iPad or, or my other device. The beauty of that is that no matter what device I'm on, everything is always gonna be there. I don't have to shut it down. So if I have web browsers, Word documents, all these things open, I can move from device to device to device, and I'm gonna have literally the exact same user experience with Windows 365. So with that being said, 
let's actually jump into provisioning our first Windows 365 desktop and see how easy or how hard it is. Of course, if you guys have any suggestions of things you wanna see or test on Windows 365, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make up a follow-up video that is of course relevant to you. So the first thing it wants us to do is put in our email address. Of course, you're gonna be using your business account and not your personal because this is targeted towards business users. Okay, so within about five minutes, not even, we have signed up for a Microsoft 365 account, business account that is. You can see here that we are now in our 365 admin center. You can see that we have our first virtual PC. It has two cores, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of hard drive storage with of course the hybrid benefit. Basically it's a discount, so we've got a Windows 10 Pro PC. And then in the window here is windows365.microsoft.com is our welcome screen. So to set yourself up with Windows 365 virtual desktop for the first time was super easy. You guys are gonna run through with me for the first time. I haven't done this before, so we're gonna learn it together. On the right hand side here, you can see that it is setting up our cloud PC. And on the left hand side, we have a nice little welcome screen. So we're gonna run through that and see how it goes. It's gonna tell us what is a cloud PC. It's essentially your desktop app settings and content stream from Windows 365 to any supported device. What can you do with a cloud PC? Well, what do they say? You have a secure place to store your documents and access your files, apps, and documents. I right, said documents twice. Um, as long as you have an internet connection and a supported device. So let's go get started while it's getting set up. And you can see here we are in the nicer looking admin center, windows365.microsoft.com. It says our cloud PC is ready for use. Let's see what else this portal has. You can connect to your browser by simply opening it in a new browser and signing in. And of course, you can manage it by hitting the settings cog. So really quite simple. It still says setting up. So let's have a look around here and see what else we can do. Um, at the top here, it says you can manage your organization. So if we add more people, I'm gonna open this up in a new tab. This is gonna take us to our regular admin.microsoft.com admin portal. And this is where you'd get the entire Microsoft 365 admin portal to manage your users. Of course, because I've just set this account up now, there's not gonna to be too much in here uh, because there's one user, myself, and we only have one subscription, which is that Windows 365 subscription. You can download the remote desktop which allows us to use a remote desktop client to connect into your virtual PC. So you're not always going into the web browser. So we're gonna download this now onto my Surface Book here, but you can also see you can actually get the remote desktop app for your Mac, for your iOS device and for your Android device. So that means that you're gonna have a single app to open to log into your Windows 365 virtual desktop. Um, then you have the option of getting more cloud PCs so you can add more subscriptions um, if you have more users, let's actually see what that looks like. If we go get more cloud PCs, it takes us over to our admin portal here. Again, I'm learning this part with you guys because it is a new feature. Um, but then we can actually scroll it down and say, do we want to get a 365 business, the hybrid benefit one? Do we need something for enterprise? And what else does this little admin portal give us? Let's us add more users. So of course we can get more cloud PCs, but you're not gonna do much with that if you don't have more users in your tenancy. And you've got the tour, we've already done that. And then you have your setup and help. It took about 30 minutes or so for the cloud PC to be ready. It's ready now, let's go launch it for the first time. Let's go open in browser, let's see how it runs. So you can see here we have one PC to choose from. I do wanna show you that if we go back to our admin center, we can actually go in our settings here. We can restart the computer, we can reset it, or we can rename it. I'm actually gonna call this a different name. I'm just gonna call this Aldo Lucero so that if we had, say, multiple people in the organization, you'd know whose computer was who. So I'm just going to close this page and I'm just gonna launch it one more time, open it in browser. It's gonna take us to the remote desktop page and then we're just gonna select on the single PC here. It's gonna say, do you wanna access the local resources like your clipboard, your microphone, your printer, your files, you do, so we're just gonna go allow, that way it can have full access to the PC here, and that's gonna connect up. to a really simple user experience um, because they're basically going to go onto their web portal or they're gonna download that desktop app. They're gonna sign in, and now it's gonna connect up to our Windows PC. I'm gonna save that password, so I'm not always having to sign this in. And you can see we are signing into our Windows PC for the first time, our Windows 365 PC, I should say. At the top here in the top right hand corner, you can see we can upload new files from our local to our cloud storage device. 
we can actually choose to unpin the navigation bar to so get rid of that top bar. We can also go full size and that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go full screen and this way, you know, this is essentially running the full screen version of that Windows 365 PC. I have I am noticing right now that there the, the screen resolution isn't as crisp and as bright as what the login screen would be on my Surface Book it was, if it was natively on here. Maybe that will change if we can get into the settings of it, but we'll find that out in a second. All right, first thing I did was I pressed the Windows key on my computer as it normally would. And as you can see, it's launched my Windows, my, my Surface Book start menu, not my virtual PC. And that's to be expected, I guess. But let's actually have a look around this computer. Let's just see how it feels, how it looks, how responsive or unresponsive it is. Uh, using the mouse, I didn't actually have to Bluetooth it up. I'm just moving it around here. Let's launch Edge. Let's go into our settings. Computer feels like it's actually turning on for the first time, um, which is kind of different. Uh, it feels like we are setting up as a brand new computer, which essentially we are, right? We're setting up a brand new PC in the cloud. Um, so I just wanna see if it has things like Windows updates that have to be pushed through. Um, looking at the screen, it does look nice, but it's not anywhere near as clear and crisp as the Surface Book, Windows is on the Surface Book. But if I needed to use this for work, it's manageable. It's okay. Um, let's just see if it has updates that need to be pushed down. I don't know. Um, definitely lag. Not a lot, but there's definitely a little bit of, of lag that I can notice. Microsoft Teams is loading up. That would be my biggest question is how does Teams work? You know, because you're essentially jumping through a few different hops. Um, we're going from here, from the local PC to the, the remote desktop is it going to be delayed and laggy when you're using it things things like teams calls um we will find that out in a later video so if you want to see that let me know in the comment section down below if that's something you want to actually see in a bit more detail to get our task manager see what specs this computer says it has and let's also go back to our settings here as i'm loading more things up it actually feels like it's lagging quite a bit um I'm not sure if that's because it's turning on for the first time or because it only has four gigs of RAM. Um, I know Teams can be a bit of a memory hog, but really we've only got Edge and we've got Teams in our settings open. Um, so we're not using all that much of our computer processing power. I'm gonna say it's just setting up for the first time here. So you can see here, it has a uh, Xeon processor, um, four gigs, of, and of course it's a Xeon because it's running in Microsoft's Azure Virtual Machine, which uses Xeon processors, not your regular Intel i5, i7, i9s. Um, of course, we have the four gigs of, of RAM um, and we have our hard drive. So that's kind of cool that we can actually get some PC utilization specs on here. And yeah, as you can see, you know, even this though this PC was provisioned in the cloud, it still actually has updates and downloads to do and to install on this PC because it is still running, you know, the Windows operating system. So it doesn't mean that you are void of having to ever update your PC or even restart it because it will require a restart at certain points. Um, so that is one thing to note that yes, even though it is a cloud PC, it's still running the Windows 10 or in the future Windows 11 operating system. So you do have the basic things you have to look after when you're running a regular Windows 10 PC, which is things like your updates, which is things like your security, which is things like making sure you don't have too many programs running that are gonna utilize all your CPU and your RAM usage. The last thing we're gonna check as this thing does its update is actually how that remote desktop client works. And we're gonna close this web browser. We're gonna leave the session running because one thing I do wanna test, yes, it's okay, we can go leave. One thing I do wanna test is that with the instant on, when we log into this via a different browser or a different device, it actually should just load us straight back into the page that we're currently in. So now we're using it on the desktop remote desktop app. Let's go Cloud PC. And this should theoretically launch us back in to that screen we just closed it on. So it should take us straight back into our settings where it's doing the updates. So it's now connecting to the remote desktop client. And this is looking a lot nicer. Actually, that is great. So when we're doing it through the web, the resolution wasn't perfect. Now that I'm running it through the remote desktop client, it is full resolution. It's just like I would have it on my regular Surface Book. 
I press the start key and it launches um, my start menu in our virtual desktop and not my physical surface book here. I do things like alt tab and that that is awesome. That is very cool. So of course, when you're running it through the remote desktop client, the app on the computer, all your keyboard shortcuts, let's do things like swiping in from the right. Um, they're all controlled and they are all running as if it was the native Windows 10 operating system installed on the computer here. So that's a big takeaway that I didn't realize before. On the web, you don't get the things like the start menu and you know shortcut keys. When you're running it through the app, you do. Um, it is still a little bit laggy though, from what I can see, but I'm gonna say that's because it is installing and downloading an update to the Windows operating system. Just like any computer is a bit laggy when you first turn it on for the first time because it's installing stuff. Awesome, so there you guys have it. That is an overview of what is Windows 365 and how easy it is to set up for the first time. What we did was we set it up and we tested it through the web browser on the Surface Book and then we ran it through the remote desktop client and that seems to be a much better experience because it gives you full fidelity of your PC and you're not running it through a web browser. Let me know what other things you guys wanna see in the comment section down below and I'll make a video tailored towards those. Of course, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you wanna supercharge how you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.